What's up, WordPress nerds? In today's video, I'm going to be going over how we can make our very own custom meta box in WordPress. So this is one of those kind of like basic skills that you should just have when working with WordPress. So I figured to make a video about it. Um, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. All right, let's jump into it. Hey guys, uh, before we jump into the tutorial, I wanted to quickly shout out this week's video sponsor. Um, this is WP Scan, and I wanted to talk a little bit about their command line interface that they have. Um, if you are interested in WordPress security at all, um, then you know how big of a, a pain it can be sometimes. And WP Scan has a CLI that makes it very easy to find the vulnerabilities in your WordPress site. So if you have a plugin that has a known vulnerability, um, it will check against uh, its database and it will notify you that something needs to be done with it, that needs to be updated, or if you have to uh, patch it yourself, something along those lines, maybe downgrade it. Um, it will also check to make sure that your user's passwords are secure, meaning that uh, they will actually try and uh, guess some of the user's passwords and see if they are easy to guess. And that way, if they find something, you can let the, the users know that they need to update their passwords, things like that. So it's going to be a very handy tool to put in your tool belt. So I st strongly recommend that you check them out. And that's WP Scan, and the link is in the description. All right, so let's uh, kind of walk through here what we're going to build. So if I add a new post, we are going to have an, a post editor, editor meta box down here. And what it has is just a select box that has um, a list of all the editors on the site. So we have an editor named test test. And then when we um, publish this page and refresh it, that uh, information has been saved and it, the uh, select box shows um, the selection that we made earlier. And then when we preview the page that we have an editor is test test kind of little div area. So this is uh, gonna be a quick tutorial that just shows you how to quickly set up your own custom meta box save that information in the in um, the database and then display that information on a template so let's uh let me delete all this stuff and then let's let's do it all right so what i've got here is i've got the 2020 wordpress theme open and i've got functions.php and template tags.php open um, the reason why we have functions.php open is because this is where we're going to be putting all of the logic in in here and it's going to be creating our um, the logic for creating our, our meta box, for um, sending it to the database, for displaying the select box, and, and things like that. The template tags.php is, is kind of just um, a coincidence where that, that this is where we're going to output the information of our author um, or our editor because this is where the author um, information lives for the 2020 WordPress theme. So that we're just using this as a place to output um, just to kind of prove that everything is working and kind of how it all ties together. Um, so the way that we're going to go about doing this is we're going to end up creating a class and we're going to call this WPC post editor, which is something that I'm making up right now. Oh, I don't know why he's typing the P. Um, and then we're going to do this up at, at the bottom, WPC post editor. And the reason why we're going to use a class um, is just because it encapsulates everything and makes it so we don't have to like prefix all of our, our functions and, and things like that. So we're just going to put everything inside of a class. So public function um, construct. So this happens every time that we new up a class. And then we are going to add an action here. Uh, the action is going to be add meta boxes. So this is something that exists inside of WordPress that uh, will get called. And so when they are adding the meta boxes, we want to hook into that. And we want to call a method that lives inside of our class. And so how you do that is you give it an array with the first item as this, which is the context. And then the next um, item is going to be the callable method. So this time it's going to be create meta box. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to do a public function. It has to be public. Public function um, create oh, create meta box. 
And so all this is going to do is this is going to call a function that WordPress gives us called add metabox. So as you can see here, it has a ton of parameters, but we're not going to worry about anything after screen. Um, ID is just the slug of the metabox that, we, that we're going to give it. It's just something that's unique. Um, and so that's going to be uh, WPC editor, something like that. Title is going to be the actual title that lives above uh, or at the top of our meta box. So something descriptive like post editor. Um, the callback is going to be what out actually outputs the HTML. Um, so this is going to be our select box and our label for that select box. And so we're going to do the same thing that we did up here on line eight. We're going to do this and then a callable um, function. So this and then we're going to call this uh, meta box HTML and then screen is an array of post types where um, this meta box will live so you can do post and uh, pages um, however we're not going to do this on posts and pages we're just going to do posts because um, we are just wanting to output the editor for posts um, the next thing that we want to do is that we want to create this uh, meta box HTML so let's uh, just copy that and do public function metabox HTML. And then we are going to actually output something. Let's just echo howdy for now. Let's just go see if this works. Um, we are going to go back to our um, dashboard and let's just do add a new post. And when that loads up, we can scroll down and it says Howdy. So post editor is that title I was talking about. So that's the thing that you see when the uh, meta box is collapsed. And then we just have howdy. So this is essentially our playground. We can put whatever we want in here. We can put images, we can put a React app, we can put whatever we want inside of here and, uh, and, and uh, go crazy. But we're not going to go crazy. We're going to keep things tame and simple. We're just going to do a nice little select box um, because it uh, is the most basic form of, uh, of, of doing this. So just keep it simple and we can do get more fancy later if we want. Um, so the Metabox HTML is going to um, essentially just be a form field. The way that uh, WordPress works when you hit update or publish or whatever is that it's kind of just one big form. And so you're just kind of adding form fields to it and it sees that it's a form field and it um, will just take that information and put it into the post array. And so we can then later pick it up on the post array and save it and do all this kind of stuff. Um, so it looks pretty darn simple when, when, it, when uh, it actually uh, is output. So let's uh, just say, let's do a label. And we're going to do this for post editor. And we're going to say just uh, editor, I think. And then uh, end the label. And then we're going to do a select. And this select is going to have all of our authors in it. Now we don't want to just manually type in an, um, something for every single author, like Alex and then um, Krusty. I don't know why Krusty the Clown <laughs> popped up into my mind, but maybe I've been watching The Simpsons a lot. Um, so, it, And so what we're going to do is we're just going to give this a name. And this name is going to, let's just do WPC Post Editor. And so when the form is submitted, it's going to take the value that has been selected here and put it in the post array with the key of WPC post editor. So that will be something that we can pick up and then do with whatever we want. But what we want to do is we want to be able to uh, have this dynamically populate with all of the editors. So let's go create an editor real quick. Um, I think the one that I created earlier might still be there. So I have test, test, and let's also just create another one just for silly sake. Um, editor two, because I'm creative. Uh, test at test.com. And let's just do bias. Okay, extra points for those who know where that's from. Um, Tobias. And then we are going to make him an editor. Oh, email. Test two. All right, so we have uh, Tobias Funke and we have test, test, test. Actually, let's change this because now 
George Michael. George Michael. Thank you for your patience while I did that. That's just for my own sake at this point. Um, and so, yeah, what we need to do is we need to make it so that select box actually has dynamic values in it. It just doesn't say Alex because that's all we typed in over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a new user query. And so it's a little bit different than a w regular WP query. So we're going to just set it to a variable user query. And we're going to do, do new WP user query. And so this takes a, an array of arguments just like a normal WP query. And the reason why I'm explaining all this is because WP user queries are um, less known than regular WP queries. And the arguments are not the same, obviously. So just trying to step through it a little bit slower. Um, the first thing that we're going to look for is a role. And we're going to say that we want the role of editor. And so it's going to grab some editors. And we're going to say that we want the number of editors to be negative one. We don't want just five editors. We don't want 10 editors. We want all the editors. And then lastly, what we want to do is we want to tell the uh, user query what we want back. So there's another parameter called fields. And it takes an array of fields that we want. And these can be, you know, fields that exist in, inside of the user. So what we're going to take is we're going to take two things. We're going to take the display name. So that'll be, you know, George Michael, or that'll be Tobias Funke. And then what we also want is the ID, both capital. And with that, um, we have our WP or our new WP user query. And so the way that you do that is you don't start the loop like you would, you know, if have posts while have posts, the post thing. Um, we're just going to assign it the results to the editor variable. So let's just take editors and we're going to make that equal to the user query get results. So that's like the WPDB um, get results method, kind of. I don't know. It's named the same. And that's the way I think about it. Um, and so what we're going to do next is if the editors is not empty. So we're going to check to make sure that something actually came back. So not empty editors space all those guys out and let's just drop this down Actually, yeah. now let's do the curly bracket people like to get mad at me when I don't do the curly bracket I like to do the else if and if kind of stuff but um, we're gonna do else echo let's just do a p tag not some regular expression looking thing um, and it's going to say no editors found just as a fallback. And so if the editors are found, we can then, um, oh, let's just have this first one be elect one. And then we'll open up some PHP tags, not print head scripts. And we're going to have our loop inside of here. Um, oh, we forgot our ID. Um, so what we're going to do then is we're going to for each over each of the authors. So for, or not authors, editors, goodness. So for each editor as editor, and then we're going to output our select. So we're going to, or our options. So let's option and option and the value, if they select it is going to be the editor. ID. So this is going to come back as a standard class, which um, just uh, comes back as an object that you can think of. Um, and, and so we um, target all of the properties of that object with this arrow. Um, and then after that, we are going to say here in the option, um, what is actually going to display as to the person creating the content is editor display name. So that corresponds to display name and ID right here. So all we're doing is plucking out those items from the, um, the results and pasting them in right here. So we should have a handful of editors that um, display right here. Um, and then let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. So let's refresh this page. 
should say select one, hopefully. Select one, and then it has Tobias Funke and George Michael. Um, so let's try this out. If we were to select Tobias Funke um, and then publish it, I mean, it's still there. Um, if as soon as that post published were to go away, I'm not going to make you guys wait for it. If we refresh the page and look, oh, it's gone. Oh, no. Um, it actually didn't do anything. I mean, it sent it off um, where it was supposed to send it off to. However, we didn't do anything with it. So we're going to have to do two more things. The first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to um, actually pick that up when it is sent to the, the back end, back to the database area, um, or back to PHP, not to the database. We're going to put it in the database. Um, and then the other thing is we're going to um, pull that um, information down. And if it uh, um, if that meta field exists, then we're going to make sure that it is reflected here. Um, so let's get back to our functions.php here. And let's uh, figure out how we're going to actually save this. So like I said, when um, we uh, um, hit update, here at the top. It takes all of this form data and it sends it off. And what we can do with that is we can um, uh, trigger or we can hook into um, another action. And I'm sure all of you know this one is save post. Um, so when save post happens, uh, we are going to have it trigger another method in our class. We're going to just call this save editor. And let's just uh, write above this HTML. Let's do public function save editor. And so what do we want to do with this is we want to get, um, well, we're going to need the post ID and save post passes, passes that to us. When save post happens, it passes the post ID to the method. So we're just going to pick that up right there. And we need to make sure that it is, um, what we need. So uh, let's do something tricky here. So let's say, well, actually, let's just let's just be simple here. Um, let's just var dump the post array because that's ultimately where this thing is. Uh, this thing is coming to. Um, and let's actually just make this a little bit easier on our eyes. Let's just say if this is there. Let's. Uh, just dump it out. So since this is Ajax, let's open up our network panel, click on XHR for all of those requests. Let's uh, select Tobias Funke. And it sent out this uh, um, XHR request. So let's click on it and it comes back with a string of four. So that got to here, it dumped out the uh, post array. So let's just uh, just to prove it to you, is that this next one has all of the information about the post. And as you can kind of see right here, says that the WPC post editor is four. So it's a numeric string that has our author ID. And so it took the, um, oops, not view page source, inspect. It took the value of four, which is Tobias Funke's um, author ID, and it sent it along. So all we have to do with that is we have to um, just make sure that that exists in our array. So let's do is set post WPC post editor. And let's also double check and um, is numeric. Not is int because it's not going to be an int. It's a string, as we saw. So just make sure it is numeric. WPC post editor. And so if that is present and it has an ID in it, well, let's handle it. So what we should do is we should, uh, well, that's going to be the editor ID. And so let's sanitize it just for um, security's sake. We can feel pretty darn safe that that's going to be safe, but. Um, you never know. So let's uh, sanitize that post field. So WPC post editor. And then from there, all we want to do is we want to up, update the post meta. Call update post meta. 
And so as you can see, we have our post ID up here and that's just gonna pass, be passed right there. Um, let's just take this uh, meta key here and just say this is what it's gonna be named. Um, and then the meta value is gonna be the editor ID. And then we don't care about the previous value. So that should be saved to the database and um, we should be good to go there. Let's actually come back here and let's just echo this out. So anytime that our meta box is rendered, let's uh, var dump get post meta, uh, get the ID for the first parameter. Let's check to see if WPC post editor is in there. And we want it to come back single. So let's hit save and let's go back to our um, post, post here. So it's not gonna show up right away. It's just gonna come back as an empty string. But when we pick Tobias and hit update, refresh the page, it has number four there. So that is currently the editor of this post. That's correct. However, it's not showing up here. Um, that's because it's up to us to make sure that that information um, matches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our option and uh, we are going to do um, another um, thing here and we're going to concatenate in selected. So selected is a WordPress function. That's super helpful. Um, and it says selected, the current, and echo. So essentially that's just trying to say like, is this um, match this? And do you want it to echo? And we don't want it to echo because we're already inside of an echo. Um, selected is the thing that uh, we currently are looking at. So let's just take this get post meta from up here because that's, we want to get that number four and we're gonna paste that back in there. And then the current is whatever iteration we are in this, um, in this for each. So let's just take editor ID right here. And then so if, uh, if the uh, WPC post editor meta field that exists for this post is equal to the editor ID in this, output selected, so the selected attribute on the option. So let's uh, go back to our page here and uh, refresh. And now it says Tobias Funke. So if we click George Michael, hit update, refresh, it now says George Michael. And so what that selected thing did is that if we open this up, it says selected when the option uh, or when the editor ID is three. So now we have ourselves a meta working meta box. Now, like I said, this can get vastly more complicated, but we're keeping it simple for simplicity sake. Um, so now just by uh, um, outputting it to the page, we kind of can complete the full circle. So let's see here. So I, inside of this template tags, we have this, um, tags.php we have this post author meta wrapper and all we're going to do is uh i'm not going to even go, get too crazy with it i'm just going to copy and paste this in here oh boy but the formatting is atrocious That's, that'll teach me let's just uh kind of fix this up real quick so you guys don't yell at me all right so we're just going to say hey um the get the uh post meta um, and this is going to be WPC um, post editor. And just like we did over here, it's the exact same um, function. And then if that comes back, uh, we're going to store that in author ID. And then we're going to get the author meta, its display name with that author ID. Let's hit save. And then uh, view our page. Is that preview? And then it says editor is George Michael. If we were to change this back to Tobias and then refresh the page, it's Tobias Funke. So it kind of uh, is a very simple example of how to create your own meta box. We didn't have to do any sort of JavaScript. All we had to do was just create the meta box, 
um, add in some HTML, a form field, and then uh, pick that up in the save post action. So I hope you guys learned something. This is definitely something that's handy to have in your tool belt, one of those kind of uh, basic tools that you'll, you'll rely on pretty heavily when you get into uh, more custom stuff with WordPress and something like ACF or or CMB2 doesn't really uh, cut it. So it kind of can become whatever you want it to be. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'd like to quickly shout out my patrons for supporting me and the channel. We have uh, two exclusive videos up right now. So if you're interested in uh, learning more about underscores and kind of my ideal workflow, then head over to uh, Patreon and, and sign up. Um, but thanks guys, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one.